Mr. President, um, supporters of the Fast Track Bill have told us over and over again that unfettered free trade will increase American jobs and increase American wages, but they have been proven dead wrong every single time we have had a trade agreement. In other words, we hear the same rhetoric. Vote for NAFTA, vote for CAFTA, vote for the free trade agreement with China. It's going to increase jobs in America, improve life for the middle class, and yet every single time the rhetoric around these past trade agreements has been proven to be dead wrong. Mr. President, I was in the House of Representatives in 1993 and 1994 during the debate over NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement. And I remember all of those people who supported that agreement telling us how NAFTA was going to open up the Mexican economy for products made in the United States of America and how it was going to create all kinds of good-paying jobs here in this country. On September 19, 1993, President Bill Clinton said the following. This is what he said, and I quote, I, President Clinton, believe that NAFTA will create 200,000 American jobs in the first two years of its effect. I believe that NAFTA will create a million jobs in the first five years of its impact. Bill Clinton, end of quote. That was President Bill Clinton, who strongly supported that agreement. But it wasn't just President Clinton who made those claims. The Heritage Foundation, one of the most conservative think tanks in this country, said back in 1993, and I quote, virtually all economists agree that NAFTA will produce a net increase of U.S. jobs over the next decade, end of quote. That is from the Heritage Foundation, conservative think tank. Further, during the debate over NAFTA in the Senate in 1993, the distinguished senator from Kentucky, Mitch McConnell, who is now the majority leader, said, and I quote, American firms will not move to Mexico just for lower wages, end of quote. Senator McConnell. Virtually every major newspaper in America had editorials saying, support NAFTA, Washington Post, New York Times, Wall Street Journal. Support NAFTA, it is good for the American worker. Well, it turns out that NAFTA, which of course was supported by every major corporation in America, supported by Wall Street, supported by all of the big money interest, well, it turns out that all of those projections regarding NAFTA turned out to be dead wrong. According to the well-respected economists at the Economic Policy Institute, NAFTA has led to the loss of more than 680,000 jobs, not the creation of a million jobs, the loss of 600 and 80,000 American jobs. In 1993, the year before NAFTA was implemented, the United States had a trade surplus with Mexico of more than $1.6 billion. Last year, the trade deficit with Mexico was $53 billion. Let me quote what the Economic Policy Institute says about NAFTA. Quote, President Clinton and his collaborators promised NAFTA would bring good-paying jobs, a rising trade surplus with Mexico, and a dramatic reduction in illegal immigration. Instead, this is according to the EPI, NAFTA directly cost the United States a net loss of 700,000 jobs. The trade surplus with Mexico turned into a chronic deficit, and the economic dislocation in Mexico increased the flow of undocumented workers into the United States." End of quote from the EPI. Further, Mr. President, let me just quote an article that appeared in the New York Times yesterday. Yesterday, quote, Mexico has become the most attractive place in North America to build new automobile factories, a shift that has siphoned jobs from the U.S. and Canada. In the past two years, eight automakers have opened or announced 
new plans or expansions in Mexico. Low labor costs and fewer tariffs are the swing factors." End of quote, New York Times yesterday. In other words, Mr. President, despite all of the rhetoric about how this unfettered free trade agreement with Mexico was going to create jobs in this country, it turned out, not too surprisingly, I voted against NAFTA, it turned out to be exactly the opposite. Those people who told us how great the agreement was, was going to be were dead wrong. Why were they wrong? Well, for obvious reasons. When you have workers in low-wage countries, people who are prepared to work for 50 cents an hour, a dollar an hour, two dollars an hour, it doesn't take a PhD in economics to figure out that corporations will shut down in America, move to those countries, pay workers pennies an hour, not have to worry about environmental regulations, not have to worry about, in some cases, trade unions. You don't have to worry about that stuff. So what would an American corporation do? Of course they would go to those countries. That's exactly what they have done. 